everyone. Uh, this is Faz Ayat Ansari from Parul Institute of Law. So we at the Center for Constitutional Law and Policy here at uh, Parul Institute of Law have been organizing a number of expert talks and guest talks on a variety of subject matters which may directly be in the realm of constitutional law or may, maybe there would be an indirect relationship between the two. So today is probably one such day uh, whereby we are uh, organizing a very interesting, a very broad based uh, session uh, on the law, meaning, approach, strategies and career opportunities. So it's a very, very broad ended topic, which may be of interest not only to the law students, but I believe their parents as well and the public at large. And for the same, we have got uh, a, a very esteemed resource person with us. Uh, we have got uh, all the way from US, Professor Dr. Vaishali Goliwadekar. Uh, so, uh, ma'am has uh, done her LLM net uh, PhD in law and education and has done uh, various courses from uh, uh, courses on common law from London University and uh, from American law from the Penn University. She has 16 more than 16 years of uh, teaching experience at various colleges in India as well from the new law college, modern law college, ILS law college, Pune, etc. Uh, currently, she is working in the area of school education uh, in New Jersey and doing her postdoctoral research in jurisprudence. And the proposal is also given to New York University for global postdoctoral doctoral fellowship. Uh, she delivers various uh, webinars nowadays in the Indian law universities as well. And uh, to help the law students during the pandemic, she also operates a, a free YouTube channel as well. So she remains really up to date with respect to that. So ma'am, a very uh, warm welcome to you. I uh, I just uh, request our Dean and Director, Professor Dr. Akhil Sayed, sir, to formally welcome you. Thank you, Professor Fais. Thank you very much. And uh, also thank you for inviting such a esteemed guest today at the doorstep of Power Institute of Law, Faculty of Law, Power University. I am very much happy to see uh, Ms. Uh, Vaishali, Professor Vaishali, I would say, um, on uh, the board. And the topic of uh, today's, uh, I, I don't know, means how would uh, uh, she uh, compile all this aspect of law in a one hour session. But that is the skill of a professor and uh, the expertise uh, I anticipate that uh, she is going to give a adequate justice to each and all every aspect of the law and uh, ma'am ours is a, a private university it was a group of institute uh, um, two decades old and uh, somewhere in 2015 it got the university status and since then uh, the faculty of law has been established and i'm happy to share with you that uh, we do offer a five-year integrated program three years law and one year PGLLM program in eight different specializations. So I request Professor Fais to uh, maintain the uh, relation with uh, uh, Professor Vaishali and ma'am, I request you also to remain in touch with uh, uh, our Parole University. We uh, invite you to be on the board of Parole University, Faculty of Law, Parole Institute of Law so that our PhD scholar, we do have nearly 38 PhD scholar pursuing PhD in the uh, subject of law. So everyone and uh, every scholar would be uh, facilitated if your good self uh, kindly agree for this on offer. So with this, I uh, give again back to the Professor Fais because uh, she has to talk on so many topics. I will not take much time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, up to you, ma'am. The session is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Dr. Akhil Sayed, for this warm welcome. And thanks a lot, uh, Professor Faiz Ansari, uh, for this opportunity. I would really like to consider about it. Um, so again, thanks a lot once again. And it's my pleasure to deliver a webinar over here. I hope I'm audible um, and visible as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, hello, students. Uh, came to. So I would like to go ahead. I can see, um, like, uh, as Professor uh, Faiz forwarded me the curriculum as well, I can see that Farrell University offers a quite interesting type of curriculum. It's a combination of BBA LLB, BA LLB, BCom LLB, plus pure LLB also is offered by your institute. 
today's lecture i want to assure you that it is going to help you like how you can um how you can shape your career using your existing knowledge so i'm aware of the fact that all the students are here today like llb students and uh, ba llb students bba llb students okay so i will make sure that my lecture helps you to plan your career and to change your approach towards looking at law so that you can use the existing course for your career betterment okay so um, as you know and i i'm aware of the thing that uh, there are mixed subjects depending upon the course economics is there for like uh, for first one two years microeconomics human resources business statistics so these are purely uh, uh, these are the subjects which uh, come from the discipline like like uh, discipline of commerce or from arts from like sociology like subjects are there plus there are some pure law subjects okay so i can see that you have constitutional law law relating to crime law relating to property interpretation of statute jurisprudence so these law subjects are also combined in your curriculum so let us go through a lecture which is customized for you students because i want it to be beneficial for you uh, so i have customized or crafted it just for your needs so let us begin it is about meaning approaches strategies and career opportunities available and how you are supposed to study from today so that you can shape your career in a better way okay so i'll start with meaning of law and then we'll go towards career opportunities available to each and every law student while doing law or after doing law so as you all know law is a professional course and combine law, combining law with uh, bba or ba or bcom or your bsc background can open new doors for every student doors of opportunity and law is totally an interdisciplinary subject interdisciplinary means see there are two types of sciences natural sciences and social sciences in natural sciences they are totally separate like physics chemistry biology okay because the object is not a living type of object all the time except biology but in case of social sciences economics sociology human resources public policy law these sciences are closely connected right see for every economic problem in society we need a law and to regulate economic relations again we need a law uh, so for every economic transaction okay or for regulating economic affairs we need laws like microeconomics human resource management and those types of law second thing for every social problem or for every social situation again we need a law right so to control that situation and again to regulate that case again we need law for so many sociological reasons for example like uh, public interest litigation public policy and those types of law for political situations right to regulate them and to solve the political problems again we need law so the law is a interdisciplinary type of subject and today we are going to use that situation for our benefit so keep this in mind and apart from that every lawyer needs a certain degree of logic so these type of subjects are there and they are beautifully woven in your syllabus so students you are really lucky to have such a nice curriculum with you today so let me begin what is law and see i'm not going to explain you the definition of law then various meanings of law today's focus is how you are going to look at your law course how you are going to change your approach towards law and how you will view it okay from your career perspective so try to be focused and please keep your notebook and pen with you and you can note down all the career options i'm going to provide at the end of this lecture okay so basic definition of law is law is there to maintain peace and order in society okay so this is a very general definition of law now let us see what is the definition of law in india this is a basic thing which you are going to understand today because without understanding this we cannot proceed further okay so law students are pretty much confused at this stage and they used to ask me questions when i used to teach in pune like i used to work with indian law institutes law college ils law college pune modern law college pune and they were like ma'am how many laws are there and how many law subjects are there 
like we have legislative law, we have constitutional law, we have international law, personal law. So why these many subjects are there? I want to be a criminal lawyer and I just want to study criminal law or I want to go in property matters. So, so I would, I should better go with property law things. So now understand how many types of laws are there and why they are there. Okay. Article 13 of the Indian constitution provides for the definition of law, right? And it includes every order, order, ordinance, bylaw, rule, notification, or custom having a force of law. See, this definition is wide enough. It covers legislative law in the definition of law. It covers administrative law. It covers uh, regulation and those types of law means international law and custom also. It means personal law is also covered in the definition of law. And that's why Constitution of India provides for so many laws. And that's why we have these laws in our syllabus. Okay, now broadly speaking, when the term law comes, it is divided into public law and private law. But at a broader perspective, it is divided into national law and international law. In case of international law, we have public international law and we have private international law. Public is between two countries and private international law is between citizens of two different countries. So we are going to leave that law aside. We'll come to national law. In case of national law, again, we have two broad types, okay? That is public law and private law. Now, what is there in public law? In public law, second party is always state. Let it be a state government or central government. Okay, so in, in public law, which subjects are there? Now remember students, in public law, three subjects are there. That is criminal law. So Indian Penal Code, CRPC evidence is a part of public law. Okay, so criminal law is first. Second is constitutional law. Again, it is a public law. And third is administrative law. So always remember in case of these three laws, because they are public laws, second party is always state because it is a duty of a state to maintain public affairs or maintain peace and order in society. So criminal law, constitutional law and administrative law. These are there in public laws. Now what comes in private laws? In private laws, you have your contract act, you have your law relating to property, law relating to trust, then uh, family law. Family law is a part of personal law, right? And in family law, you know that uh, for Hindus, law is different. For Muslim, law is different. For, for Parsis, for Christians, and there is one secular law, Special Marriage Act, which is applicable in case of interreligion marriage. So this is our personal law. And apart from that, we have martial law, okay? So court martial and all those laws. Uh, so th those are stricter types of laws. So this is a broad thing, okay? So we have these laws in India, okay? And they come under the domain of either public law or private law. And apart from that, we have international law. So every treaty made by United Nations must be internalized uh, in your law, must be codified by our system and it gets applicable. So this is a broad thing, okay, which I explained. Now let us go to next thing. Students wonder that ma'am, why jurisprudence is there in the syllabus? Or ma'am, why uh, interpretation of statutes? We don't need this subject in syllabus. Or why criminology, ma'am? We have IPC, we have evidence, we have CRPC. We know POSCO, TADA, MOCA. We don't need criminology, right? So students, they do not like these types of subjects. They do not understand the practical purpose behind these subjects. So students, they often used to argue with me, ma'am, just explain one practical importance of jurisprudence or one practical importance of criminology or why interpretation of statute, why so many legal magazines are there, okay? Why professional ethics is there when nobody follows ethics now in today's world? Okay, so students, they used to ask me such questions. So these are pure law subjects, okay? So law subjects I'm telling. And apart from law subjects, there are some just laws. And which are those laws? We have Indian Penal Code, okay, which is a statute. We have Contract Act, property law is there, company law is there, Indian Constitution is there, okay? So pure statutes, constitution is not a statute. Under the constitution, all the statutes are made. So this is our polity, okay? Because we follow Kelson's theory of pure law in India. Students, it is going to be there in jurisprudence. Remember that we follow Kelson's theory of pure law of grand norm. In every country, a grand norm or basic norm is there. And in India, it is a constitution. So every law must be tested on the touchstone of constitution. If it, is, it goes along with the constitution, it is a good law. If it doesn't go with the constitution, it is a bad law. 
Okay, so that is the test we apply here because we have a constitutional supremacy. Again, there is an exception to every rule. So personal law is an exception over here. Remember these things, okay? I know this is a little too much for less time, but just try to be focused. Okay, so now you have pure laws, okay, statutes and constitution. Statute means act of a parliament. Parliament means Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, along with President of India. Okay, so laws made by central legislature or state legislature are called as statutes. Indian Penal Code, though it is made by Britishers, it is codified later. Okay, or it we can say that it was made as a, it was accepted as an Indian law. So it is a statute. And then we have constitution. So these are law subjects. These are laws or pure laws. Okay, statutory or constitutional. And then we have law subject. Now students, they hate law subjects. I know that lots of students, but understand the practical utility of law subjects so that you can plan your studies accordingly. Students usually give less importance to law subjects because they think that I'm going to do criminal law practice. I will better focus on uh, IPC and a CRPC. Now let me help you how to connect these subjects. Okay, uh, before some days, I made a quote for law students. I work here in law area. Uh, so there was a meeting arranged by uh, a famous attorney in New York. And the, that meeting was with a couple of uh, academicians and, a, an, and justice of US Supreme Court in Pennsylvania. Okay, so uh, justice, I think Wedley or uh, his name was something like that. And he told me, that in US, all the states are sovereign. We are 50 sovereign states and we can show activism over here because there is a lot of gray area in law and we can show activism because it's a purely federal thing, right? US is a purely federal system and they have Supreme Courts at every state. We can talk about it later. Now let us come to the point. So I made a quote and which became quite famous that good lawyer knows how to interpret a law. Best Good lawyer knows the, I'm sorry, pardon me. Good lawyer knows the law, okay? So good lawyer is a lawyer who knows the law. Best lawyer is a lawyer who knows how to interpret the law. And great lawyer is a lawyer who knows how to interpret the gray area in law. In law, between those white paper and black lines, there is a lot of scope for interpretation and that is called as gray area, okay? So how to interpret that gray area? how to interpret a particular point for your client's benefit or uh, for a public benefit. That knowledge comes from these law subjects. That knowledge comes from jurisprudence. That knowledge comes from criminology. Okay. Now you will ask me how. See, concept of liability. In India, we uh, earlier it was a strict liability. Because of judicial activism, now we have absolute liability. How this journey shifted from strict liability to absolute liability, to no fault liability. This is the power of interpretation. Law is there, okay? Multiple interpretations are provided in jurisprudence. See, there are concepts like liability, right, duty. So your interpretation should, should go with the philosophy or basic philosophy of that subject, okay? And for that, you should know the subject, right? So criminology will help a lawyer to figure out what he is going to talk in front of a judge regarding punishments, how to frame a proper punishment. See, first appeal goes from lawyer and then judge thinks about it, right? So in, in your Vakalat Nama, you have to plead something for your client and then, you're the, then the judge is going to decide. There is one more quote by me that activism starts with lawyers, right? You have to interpret a law first and then judges come, right? So you have to interpret at the first point. And for that interpretation, you need these subjects. Okay, so this is a practical utility. Second thing, nowadays, we can see that everywhere you need to solve MCQs. Okay, let it be CLAT, let it be CLAT PG, let it be NETSET, let it be JMFC exam or any competitive exam. For that, for those MCQs, students, they used to tell me that, ma'am, we studied law subjects for three years or five years. Still, we don't know how to solve MCQs. Do you know why? Because lots of MCQs comes from these gray areas and knowledge of those gray areas comes from these subjects like jurisprudence. Kelsen, Grunno, Norm, that type of connection, okay? Whether we follow Dicey's 
rule of law in India, whether we follow all the three parameters. Answer is no. We do not follow third parameter. So that knowledge is must to solve MCQ because in law we do we do theoretical study, right? We are used to write a big answer, but this approach is not going to help you while solving MCQ. For so solving MCQs, accuracy of knowledge matters, and that accuracy of knowledge comes from detailed study of all the law subjects, and not like I'm not. Asking you to be bookish or mug up every section or remember each and everything, but understand the basics. Once you know the basics, you can develop them. You can interpret them as for your purpose. So knowing them with accuracy is important. If your knowledge is accurate, you can solve any MCQ relating to law. So these subjects, law subjects, though you feel that they are a little boring at this point of time, they are going to help you with interpretation. For solving all the MCQs, for judicial exams, for net set, for CLAT PG, and for so many governmental exams, which you might be planning to appear after your your law course. Okay. So now you know what is law and law subjects which are there in your curriculum or in your syllabus. Okay. Now how your approach should be, how you are going to see these subjects. Keep your goal in mind. At the end of this lecture, I will give you an idea about so many courses, so many examinations, and uh, so many opportunities which are available to each and every law student. So keep one opportunity in your mind and plan your career right now according to that opportunity which you are looking for yourself. Okay, how? How your, inter uh, how your approach should be? Look at law as a holistic subject. Do not separate these subjects. Try to connect these subjects, okay? What mistake we do that, ma'am, this year I will focus on these subjects or I will uh, keep some topics in this subject for option. I will do only these topics. Don't do that. At least learn every subject at conceptual level. It is going to take your knowledge to next level after that. Okay, so how your approach and strategies are going to be, uh, I'm going to tell you now. Connect these subjects, okay? How you're going to connect these subjects, okay? See, interpretation of statutes is there in your syllabus, constitutional law is there, and jurisprudence is there. You know Maneka Gandhi's case. Okay, so in Maneka Gandhi's case, what happened? Concept of liberty was given a different interpretation. So earlier it was physical liberty and the scope was expanded. So it comes under Article 21 of the Constitution of India, and there are some other articles. Same case you can use in jurisprudence while writing about American legal realism. Okay, same case law you can use in interpretation of statute while writing a golden rule of interpretation. So see, one case law and you are using it in so many subjects and there are so many such case laws. Okay, so you should know, you should be in that capacity to connect these subjects. So do not sub try to study these subjects separately, just try your approach. Just read the question and then frame your answer accordingly. You, you will get more marks. I would like to give you one more session on how to get good marks and how to use your existing knowledge. But let us come to today's point first. So you can take your interpretation to next level by connecting these subjects. So get into that habit. Keep a goal in your mind that I'm, I want to appear for JMFC. And do you know students, uh, just try this trick, okay? If you want to appear for JMFC or JAG officer or UPSC or you are planning for net set or for any other career which is associated with law, just try to go through a question paper which is meant for those examinations. I'm giving you an example of JMFC. Just for fun, you can Google it. Previous year JMFC paper or any JMFC paper and just go through it. Do you know how it helps you? Once you go through these MCQs, you realize that how the questions are framed and what is expected from you. And after reading those questions, when we read your usual law book, okay, your approach changes. Your brain gives you directions that yes, this type of question can be asked. And I am supposed to do it from this perspective or I'm supposed to remember this like this. Okay, for example, if question is there, just an example, okay. 
whether Dicey's rule of law is applicable in India in totality. Okay. Option number one, whether equality of law is there. Second, whether we have predominance of legal spirit in India. So rule of law, Dicey has three components. Okay. And they are supremacy of law, equality before law and predominance of legal spirit. And four, none of the above. So yes, we have supremacy of law in India. We have Indian constitution, which is a supreme law. Second, we have equality before law. We have article 14, which provides for equality. But we don't have predominance of legal spirit. So third component of Dicey's principle is not applicable. And I can see that it is taught in a wrong way in so many colleges, right? What is spirit which is alive, which never dies, right? In Britain, they do not have constitution. And they say that British man, we are British man, and we are not going to get ruled by a dead document like constitution because constitution has no spirit. It is not living. It is made before like 50 years or 60 years. So we are not going to get ruled by the constitution. And that because we have predominance of legal spirit, right? Because their democracy is different, our democracy is different. Indian constitution is framed after Britishers left. So we combined British constitution, American constitution, Irish constitution, Canadian constitution, and we, and we borrowed the principle which were suitable for our country, right? And that's why we, we couldn't afford predominance of legal spirit. Otherwise, what will happen? Politicians will come and they will change the law as per their comfort, right? And that's why we have predominance of constitution because that is our need. So you should keep this in mind. And then while solving those MCQs, you will take that we do not have predominance of legal spirit in India, right? So that's how you will look at the subject at a conceptual level. Once the concept is clear, you can solve any MCQ relating to that subject, okay? So that's how your mind starts working. And then you can solve other MCQs relating to rule of law. It gets that easy. So, guys, uh, so students, just go through the question papers, okay? of any course, let it be NET, let it be JMFC, let it be UPSC, and there are like public service officers, I'm going to give you the idea about those careers. So if you have something in mind, okay, let it be CS, let it be some other law related course, just go through a question paper today only. After my lecture, just Google a question paper of your dream examination of your, or, or your, or your dream career, okay? your brain will connect you to that career. This is simple uh, logical thing which happens in brain that I'm going to solve this type of questions in future and let us program my brain accordingly. Okay, so that's happened in your brain. So just go through the question paper today and tomorrow you will tell me that ma'am, it was really useful because it helped me. So that's what strategies and your approach will be, holistic approach and strategies just Go through a question paper of your dream examination and help your brain to figure out the situation. Give yourself some time and within two, three months, you will realize that, yes, I want to follow this examination and this is going to be my plan for next two years or three years or one year. Okay, students? So be focused, be goal-oriented and as for your goal, frame your career path. So do not waste these three years or two years or remaining one year uh, and do not think that once law is done, I will prepare for this uh, exam, I'll prepare for that exam. It never happens. You have to do it from today. Okay, so start preparing for that. Now, uh, before that, uh, you should un always understand the subject at conceptual level first and then application. Uh, this automatically happens if you know the subject at conceptual level, know the concept like federalism, separation of power, parliamentary supremacy, judicial, uh, independence and rule of law type of concepts. I will not go into these details. We can talk about these later. later. Let us go to opportunities. Uh, sir, I hope I'm audible and visible. Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, so today we'll discuss all the law careers which are available to you after doing LLB BSL, LLB, BBA, LLB, or BCom, LLB, or the other courses while doing law and after doing law. First, we'll study what are the natural things which will come in front of you. So normally what comes in front of every law student after doing law, 
then we'll go through all the governmental jobs or governmental opportunities and other opportunities which are available to law students. Students, believe me, there are so many opportunities you cannot imagine. Okay, it's a law is an interdisciplinary and very interesting type of subject. If you study for UPSC, a big chunk comes from law, big chunk of knowledge. Okay, if you study for any agri any examination relating to agriculture or such type of exams, again a big chunk comes from law because law is nothing but polity and it is closely connected with so many fields. So law opens a wide door for so many opportunities. So feel lucky that you are a law student, okay? So what normally comes in front of every law student after doing law? First thing, litigation or court practice, okay? So court practice is a first option. Uh, after doing LLB, you, have, you need to register with um, Bar Council of India and you can start practice. Again, in practice, you can join a law firm. So that option is available to you, depending upon your interest, which uh, type of law firm, like uh, law firm relating to uh, cor uh, corporate matters, law firm relating to property matters, relating to family matters. Okay, so you can focus on these subjects and you can join law firm. You can be an associate. Okay, so you can join any lawyer's office and you can be a law associate over there. And you can start your independent practice after four to five years of experience, experience or 10 years of experience. So this is a long way. It needs a certain devotion, dedication, and a lot of hard work. So litigation is a first choice, which is also called as a court practice. In litigation, again, you have three options. Uh, you can join um, any lawyer's office or advocate's office. As an associate, you can join a law firm or you can start your independent practice. Okay. So this is the first option which comes naturally, which is obvious, right? Second option is judiciary. So lower judiciary and upper judiciary, like high court and then um, basic magistrates, so judicial magistrate first class. Again, just like any competitive exam, it goes through prelims, mains, and interview. I have trained lots of judicial uh, officers, lots of judges in India. They are my students actually. And do you know, uh, for GMFC, uh, same subjects are there, constitutional law, then um, there is a criminal law, property law, so same subjects are there. But for interview, lots of questions are asked, which relates to interpretation, okay? So do not, that's why I'm trying to tell you, do not ignore these subjects, because nowadays, every law relating related exam goes through three stages, prelims, mains, and interviews, okay? And for these, to crack these uh Crack these stages effectively. You need to know basic law subjects. So do not ignore your interpretation of statutes, your constitutional law, jurisprudence, criminology, and these subjects because they are going to help you in a long way. Okay, so judiciary, JMFC is there. Uh, and start preparing for judiciary today only. Because for JMFC, you do not, you are not supposed to do anything else or separate. Just the same subjects are there. All the subjects are there. Okay, and just aptitude, okay? So if you are going through an exam, which is meant for teacher, they study your teaching aptitude, okay? If you are going through UPSC, they study that type of aptitude, which is needed for that type of career. So keep that in your mind. So I want to be a judge. That's why I'm appearing for this subject, for this exam. And that's how my approach should be in interview, in prelims, in mains, right? So first, Think like that, that I I'm appearing for net because I want to be a teacher and start thinking how a teacher thinks. And then you will crack the examination. It's just like that. Change your approach towards that examination. What, what mistake, mistake we do, that we are used to descriptive writing. So write a big answer, study for hours. Every exam needs different type of preparation and different type of approach. Do you know that? Just study is not going to help you. Strategies, planning, approach is going to help you. Help you. Uh, I'll just tell you a real life instance, like my case. After doing my LLM, I was a gold medalist from Pune University. Uh, I came to US. I had to come because my family stays here. Uh, after coming here, I appeared for TOEFL. I got admission in University of California, but I always wanted to pursue my career in India. So I went back to India. I appeared for NET. <laughs> Do you know what did I do? 
first i went through a question paper and i planned my examination that this is the exam and these types of questions are asked okay basic law exam but different different types of abilities are tested some some degree of logic some degree of math some degree of general knowledge and all so i framed or planned my studies that this much weightage is to this subject this much weightage is to this subject so i have to crack first stage first then only i can go to second stage so prepare for first stage okay start preparing and do you know students in first attempt within four months i cracked net examination i appeared for net i came back to usa my result came and i was cleared i'm not telling this to brag okay or to glorify how i studied or how great i am i'm not i'm just like you but i planned my exam i changed my approach okay and you are going to do the same if you want to crack these type of examinations okay so usually we go with same mindset same mindset is not going to help if you are going to crack gmfc change your approach if you are going to crack upsc change your approach okay change your approach first and then make a plan so first career we discussed is litigation or court practice second judiciary now third is teaching after doing llm if your aggregate is about 55% you can appear for net set examination net is for national level and set is for state level after clearing net set uh, you can join a law college as a law professor as assistant professor and there is a shortage of good law teachers in our country so you can frame or uh, you can plan your career on in this direction also again general aptitude is there and objective questions are there so teaching aptitude right because you have to change your approach so net set so court practice or litigation judiciary and net set so these are the three clear options which every law student gets after llb or llm next is government jobs there are so many government jobs you can uh, go ahead with number 1 public prosecutor a uh, public prosecutor is an advocate or a prosecutor who represents state or central government okay because as i told you in case of public law right constitutional law administrative law and criminal law second party is always state so state needs someone to represent it right and that is done by public prosecutor so every um, court has a public prosecutor so what is the qualification 7 years of experience as an advocate and for public prosecutor upsc conducts an exam so that body upsc frames an exam or sets an exam for public prosecutor and then interviews are there so if uh, after practicing 7 years as an advocate you can appear for that exam which is conducted or set by upsc and you can become a public prosecutor public prosecutor means a lawyer from a government okay second ibps law officer institute of banking personal selection is called ibps and ibps conduct examination now what is ibps officer who handles legal department of every public sector bank so in every public sector bank ibps officer is needed institute of banking personal is needed okay so what is the qualification law degree and bar enrollment so your law degree and bar enrollment okay bci uh, registration uh, it what is an exam what is the what type of exam is there for ibps officer a uh, competitive exam there is a competitive exam framed by institute of banking personnel uh, committee three stages again prelims mains and interview focus is more on um, banking laws or economic laws or the laws which are actually there uh, human resource management and those types of laws they are there in your course i went through it so those type of economics laws is is a focus but less vacancy is there good perks are there and extremely competitive type of exam is this so if you are from a commerce background okay or if you are interested in commerce back that type of studies like banking human resource management and those type of studies ibps law officer is a good option for you so if you are interested start preparing today okay go through the previous exam um, question papers and start preparing after your law degree and after bar enrollment you can appear for ibps law officer exam next government job is sebi grade a legal officer okay so securities exchange board of india takes this type of uh, examination 
law relating to stock, stock exchange, securities, market laws, these type of laws are required for this exam. What is the qualification? Just your law degree. Okay, so law degree. Again, this exam is conducted in three stages. Mains, prelims, prelims, mains and interview. Okay, so three stages are there just like any competitive exam. And you can become SEBI grade A legal officer. Uh, if you are a law student or bachelor of engineering or CA, you can um, appear for this exam directly. But for, but for other disciplines, uh, you need to be a master in other disciplines. For, for law students, it's a red carpet. You can appear for this exam after getting your law degree um, and knowledge. It's stock exchange, uh, market knowledge and market laws. Again, three stages. So we discussed public prosecutor examination. We discussed IBPS law officer, SEBI grade A legal officer. After that, in army also, there is a post called JAG. J-A-G. Judge Advocate General. Okay. Again, vacancies are very few. Exam is highly competitive. Main focus is on law knowledge and physical fitness. So as you know, army, okay, it has a different law court martial which i discussed so for um, uh, for uh, civilians or for us normal law is applicable for but for army related matters law is stricter because uh, they are supposed to show uh, different type of attitude and for them laws are really strict court martial and all those which we, we must have seen in lots of hindi movies uh, so those laws are strict and to solve those army related matters they need a law officer which is called jag okay judge advocate general and um, so what is the qualification law degree aggregate 55 percent marks and your college must be bci recognized college and indian army invites applications for this post okay so after a law degree um Indian Army invites these type of applications. You can just feel the application. If your physical fitness is good, you can um, try this type of job. So this is a really good opportunity for our law students. Next is PSUS legal officers, public sector undertaking. There are lots of public sector undertakings like ONGC, DAID is there. For those type of uh, legal uh, uh, public sector undertakings, there is an officer. Now, what is the qualification? After doing law, appear for CLAT PG, okay? See, CLAT PG is required for post-graduation and CLAT PG is required for PSUS legal officers. So just by appearing for CLAT PG, okay? And depending upon the score of your CLAT PG, interview will be done and a selection happens. No experience is required in case of PSUS law officers. So just your law degree and you can appear for this, okay? So after law, you can appear for CLAT PG, okay? And depending upon your score in CLAT PG examination, your interview can happen for PS PSUS legal officer and then selection can happen and no experience is required. Again, good perks are there, allowances are good, salaries also good. Again, extremely competitive. So if you are planning to go for this, plan today. So write down all these career options, students. Uh, governmental jobs, so judiciary and net set, okay, so we'll go through it. So first is JMFC, public prosecutor, IBPS law officer, just note down, public prosecutor for which again exam is there, IBPS law officer, SEBI grade A legal officer, army, JAG, judge advocate general, PSUS law officer. So these are the governmental jobs which you can try for after doing your LLB, okay? So... For net set, for net set only, master's is required. For other jobs, just your normal law degree is enough, your LLB. So you can try for these governmental jobs and there are very good opportunities. Though there are less vacancies and extremely competitive, if you plan it from today, you can crack it for sure, okay? After that, what are the other opportunities which are available to law students? Consultancy. So you can consult a law legal advice, legal opinions. So there are so many uh, banks, there are so many NGOs, uh, there are so many schools, hospitals, which needs representation. You can provide consultancy to them or you can advise them. You can stay on their panel and you can give them advice when, whenever it is needed. Okay, 
So, consultancy, research. Now there is a really good scope for research. Okay. So if your your anal uh, your focus or your aptitude is analytical type of or your approach is analytical type of, you can go for research type of job. In lots of foreign universities, in Indian un universities also, there is a lot of scope for such research activities. How you can plan your career in these activities? Just take a topic, okay? Any area, like if you are interested in public law or public interest litigation, take a small topic, okay? And study the topic in other countries. India follows common law system, so base is uh, U uh, UK's law, and then we follow US law also. So US, UK, and India is a better comparison from the legal perspective because legal systems are similar. So take a topic, narrow down it to a great extent, and find out the lacunas in our system, what our law needs, what type of improvement is needed. Provide a good roadmap and present your research paper. It really helps. If your research is good, you can get lots of opportunities in, in, in Indian universities and in foreign universities. Okay. So research is the next career after legal advice or consultancy. Next is UPSC or MPSC. See, for any UPSC and exa MPSC examination, uh, there is a subject, constitutional law, okay, and polity also. Indian polity. These subjects are mixed. A big chunk comes from law, a big chunk of knowledge, okay? See, polity is nothing but constitutional law because constitution is our political document, right? It it describes our polity, how our polity is. This is our structure. This is our type of federalism with a mixture of certain unitary features. This is our concept of separation of powers. So constitution is a basic document about Indian polity, right? So for UPSC and NPSC, I guide these students also occasionally a big chunk of knowledge comes from law. So if you are a law student, just go ahead. UPSC is a good career for you. MPSC is a good career for you and other public ser uh, service examinations. So you can plan for that. NGOs. Lots of NGOs are there in India. And after joining NGO, you can go to foreign countries as, as well. If your research is good, if your work is good in that area. You can plan for foreign universities. So after LLB, you can uh, go for foreign universities for LLM or after doing LLM also, you can go to foreign universities. Lots of universities provide uh, for, for one year course for foreign lawyers. And after doing that course, you can appear for a bar exam of that country and you can practice in that country. So that opportunity is there. If uh, you are a commerce student, CS plus law is a very good combination. Okay, CA plus law, CS plus law. If you are a, you have done your BSc or you are a science student still 12, you can go in uh, medical related practices like uh, a medical jurisprudence type of means uh, consumer cases relating to doctors, okay? MTP Act, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, law relating to surrogacy, there are so many such related law. If your orientation is type of social or your art students or sociology student, you can go in PIL, okay, public interest litigation. So you can do your normal practice. And as a supporting thing, you can go in PIL. You can research. You can put your output. You can suggest different majors. So there are like unlimited options after doing law. So you can combine your science knowledge with your practice by entering in that field. You can combine your commerce knowledge in your practice by going in that field. So these are the broad options. And there are, again, so many other options. So today we discussed governmental jobs, we discussed uh, litigation type of uh, practices, consultancy type of practices, research, UPSC, MPSC, other exams, NGOs, and those many options. So these are the career opportunities. So stay focused, plan today. It's not at all difficult. Just change your approach according to your uh, career choice and start it today. So promise me, after going home, you are going to just go through a question paper of your dream examination, okay? So that is going to be your approach or strategy for next three years or two years. Plan your career today, okay? So don't wait for three years or two years or till you get your law degree. Plan today. Plan for JAG. Plan for PSUS law officer. There are so many careers which are connected with law. It's just like a red carpet for law students, but focus matters. So focus today and do not ignore those gray areas or those theoretical subjects which you feel boring today. Okay, so that's it for the day.
Um, I'm thankful to Dr. Professor Akil Sayed for giving me an opportunity to interact with you students. Um, Farrell University, I must say that it's a different type of university, which which is more career type of law college. I can see that as a, by having a look at the law courses you, you are providing for your students, BBA, LLB, BLLB, BCOM. So I'm really impressed with the curriculum and all. So uh, I'm really thankful to Dr. Professor Akil Sayed for giving me this opportunity. You have got a very young and dynamic professor, Faiz, uh, who is in hand on LinkedIn, and he can he connects with lots of um, dignitaries for you, and he's giving you a good um, panel for discussion over here. I'm really thankful for the management, and I'm thankful um, to Center for Constitutional Law and Policy, Powell University, for this opportunity. Uh, and I'm thankful to you students for listening me patiently here. Um, I, as you know, I run a YouTube channel just for law students. So if you need any, if you need accurate knowledge of any law topic, you can visit my channel, Law Simple and Pure and on YouTube, because accuracy of knowledge really matters in today's world. Your knowledge has to be authentic and accurate. So do not go behind those small law notes, study from good books from, which are there in your library. library. So that's it for the day. Good day. I'm sorry. Good evening to you students. It is a good day for me. All the best. Thank you for taking out the time ma'am, and waking up early morning there in the US. Uh, I would just, uh, does anyone have any questions? Do you want to ask to Vaishali ma'am? Any questions? A lot of career options were covered. Basically, uh, you got a taste of a lot of things, which some of them you may be aware of. Some of them you probably must have heard for the first time. So any questions or anything about how to approach uh, your career? Tan Tanaya? Yeah, Tanaya is raising her hand. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, actually, I'm a science student. Uh -huh. Hi, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing good, Tanaya. How are you doing? Yes, ma'am, I'm good. Yes, go ahead, please. Ma'am, actually, I am a science student, but I have uh -huh. to switch towards law. Mm -hmm. So, what can I do? Because I don't have any kind of basic knowledge. Okay. So, what can I refer to get that basic knowledge? Basic knowledge? Um, see, uh, basically, the law books which are there in your curriculum is a good option. Okay. And basic knowledge means knowledge of basic concepts like, see, a federalism, separation of powers, rule of law. Okay, so certain basic features of Indian polity or Indian system of law. So you need to go through it for that. Law books are there. You can um, study articles and see. Just check your interest first, like which appeals you most, which type of career you are dreaming for yourself, and then frame your today's studies according to it. Okay, Danya? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Any other questions? Any student? Students, you can ask me oh, questions. Yes? Yeah, Paul. Yes, Paul. Yeah. Hi. Okay, uh, I'm very sorry, ma'am, to interject, uh, but my question is not um, so much broad. As an international mm -hmm. student, I wanted to uh -huh. hear out um, after I'm done with my course of law, mm -hmm. how effective is it to, uh, for me when I go back to my country? Uh -huh. uh, how will I coordinate with it well? Because I guess most of the stuff is uh, Constitution of India and, yeah. Sure, uh -huh. that's, that's 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 on the thing. So, just wanted some career guidance. What uh, what should I do? Because I, I really grooved in so much deep with the constitution of India, and so much uh -huh. interesting, and I'm really enjoying it. You do? So I don't know my country how the impact will be. Oh, from which country? I'm certain to be in India that that might already be so populated. Paul, Paul, you're from which legal system? From which country? I'm from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. So our legal systems are pretty much similar, right? It's a common law legal system because Britishers ruled Zimbabwe and Britishers ruled India. 
So our system is pretty much similar. It's common law legal system. And that's why you find Indian constitution interesting, right? Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Paul. So, uh, yes. Uh, um, so you just focus on all the basic concepts which are similar in our legal system, like both the legal systems, they have some similar features. You can focus on them and you can do your practice in your constitutional law afterwards. And Paul, you can uh, frame your question and you can email me and I would like to guide you because lots of African students like Z from Zimbabwe also, they are in touch with me. And yes, we are uh, planning career options for them. So you can email me. I will, I'm providing my email address over here and students feel free to email me if you want to plan your career or you want to explore more. Okay. Yeah, thank awesome. you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, Professor Faiz, he has my email number. You can uh, email ID. You can get it from him. And I would like to uh, talk about your career. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. Great. Anything else, anyone? Any other questions or queries? We have almost run out of time. So in case you have anything in mind, just speak out now. Students, uh, if you have any questions relating to any law concept, you can definitely email me or you can uh, like uh, you can visit my YouTube channel and you can le learn all those concepts from there. OK. And if you have any doubt about your career, you can ask me right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, some of them must be a little uh, wondering about their careers. Maybe they will take some time, ma'am. So I, I'll definitely ask them to mail you in case they want to contact you so mm -hmm. we have almost run out of time uh, so uh, thank you so much for taking out the time for us at the institute of law for the center as well and uh, you covered many many uh, aspects with respect to law as a career with respect to the approach the strategies uh, like you also went into the slight details of it with respect to the mcqs and stuff like that so how which would I believe give a fair idea to the students that uh, what to do, what not to do, uh, which is equally important. So thanks a lot for those wonderful insights uh, from the entire uh, center as well as the Institute of Law. Thank you so much, ma'am. My pleasure. All right, thank you. So let us end the session. Goodbye once again, and thanks a lot for being here. And I'm thankful to Professor Faiz and Professor Do uh, Dr. Akil Sayyar for inviting me here. Have a good evening ahead. Uh, sir, uh, Faiz, sir? Thank you, ma'am.